welcome back to my YouTube channel. Your pageant girl is back again to give you some pageant insight. But before anything else, let me just share you the makeup that I use for today's episode of my vlog. Okay, so let's start with the uh, eyeshadow. I don't know if you can appreciate it because I don't know how to put eyeshadow. Go go ako lang yan. What I use is the Morphe Cosmetic in collaboration with Kathleen Lights. Here's the palette inside, the colors. And for the bronzer, I actually use this ColourPop Cosmetic. This is in the shade of Topaz, a bronzer. It's actually a bronzer and a highlighter palette. There you have it. It's actually a ColourPop Cosmetic in collaboration with Alexis Ren. Okay. And for my lipstick, there you can see it. It's very, uh, you know, it's very natural look. And then very lightweight. I so love this BLK Cosmetic in the shade of Simple. Actually, wala na siyang laman. Ubus na siya. So, BLK, baka naman. Meron tayong pa-promo dyan. Charot! Okay, so before we start this um, episode, I just want to tell each and every one of you that my heart is full of joy and gratitude. And I'll be sharing it with you guys soon. But maybe some of you are actually aware what's going on or what I'm actually pertaining to. But yeah, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much first to my um, subscribers. Can you imagine, guys? We just reached 1,000 subscribers in YouTube and, you know, this is something that is, you know, very, um, very special for me. It's really a big thing for me, but I can say that, you know, it's a really a humble achievement in my life. So, it will not be possible um, without you guys. So, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I know that thank you will never be enough because, sabi ko if it's not because of you, if it's not because of the pageant, uh, fans or pageant viewers out there, I might not be able to achieve whatever I have right now in this channel. And as I promised, uh, you know, I'll make a video greeting, especially to these wonderful people. Let's start saying hi and hello to Archie Samson, Vilia Jane Inorio, Aubrey de Guzman Bartolome, Dennis uh, Ginchanos, Joven de Belen, Alejandro Florentino Jr. and May Laurent Doyones. Thank you so much, guys, to each and every one of you, especially to my uh, subscribers. Please continue uh, in supporting me by not skipping the ads. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, seriously, I hope that you guys will actually continue, you know, supporting me in my YouTube journey. So, if you're watching this video right now and if you're not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Just click the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There you have it. So, um, today's a brand new month. Hello, August. Ayan. Siyempre, um, a brand new um, episode here in my channel. Papalapit na ng papalapit ang Miss Universe. Kaya naman, for today's episode, I'll be sharing you guys my front runners in this year's edition of Miss Universe 2019. So, we don't have any particular um, date or host country yet, but some uh, pageant news online actually posting that it will be here in the Philippines by January of 2020. If that's gonna happen, well... I hope that I can watch Miss Universe Live in the Philippines for the second time around so I can give you guys more pageant insight. I only have three countries um, so far as my front runners in this year's Miss Universe. And I determined my top three based on sash factor and consistent placement in the semifinals. So let's start with sash factor. Um, sash factor for me is very important because it gives the delegate or the candidate that hype or that popularity even though it's not yet the you know uh, real competition it's like when you see a delegate wearing her sash with her home country on it you will go by saying wow she can be the next Miss Universe so countries like Venezuela Colombia Philippines USA for me at the mga countries na you know that have this sash factor and sila yung mga candidates na matutunog even wala pa yung competition even uh pa start pa lang yung competition and they're always you know um given that opportunity 
uh, to be part of the semi-finalist in the top 10 or top 15 because of their sash factor. Second will be the, you know, the placement or consistent placement in the semi-finals, whether top 15 or top 10. So, on my first list, I have... Maria Venus Rock, 22, Philippines. Philippines. Chancy Sipso, 25, Philippines. Janine Tobolon, 23, Philippines. Ariela Aridon, the Bunan, Philippines. Mary Jean Lastimosa, Philippines. Pia Alonso Wurzbach, 26, Philippines. Maria Maika Martin, Marina. that fourth major major placement of Venus Ra in Miss Universe in 2010 there is no doubt that the Philippines is now considered as the pageant powerhouse in Asia from 2010 till 2018 Philippines has never failed to be part of the semi-finals or the top 15 or the top 10 I consider Gazini Ganados as one of my front runners in this year's Miss Universe 2019 because of her overall performance uh, during the Binibiling Pilipinas um, Coronation Night. Her swimsuit walk and her performance uh, while walking in her evening gown was really a Miss Universe performance for me. And her advantage? Watch this video. It's like shooting, you know, uh, Fadil Barisha. There you go. See the see those eyes. Her advantage will be her exotic aura. And, and for sure, that she will do her best to win back to back for a country. And second on my list, of course, Sawari Ha, I have the Land of Smiles, the amazing Thailand. It was an impeccable performance for Thailand in Miss Universe in the past four years, especially when Chalira uh, landed on the top five. And same thing with Maria in 2017. And therefore, I'm giving this country a sash factor. But why am I considering Fasai Pawing Suda as a front runner? Although many of us thought that she copied the styling, the walk, and the turn of Catriona Gray, um, I can really say that this woman is really a front runner. Here's the reason why. Let's watch this video. You know, I grew up for the first seven years of my life. I graduated in Canada and I could have stayed there, I could have worked there. And when I competed in a pageant, I could have competed over there. But I wanted to be Thailand's representative because I believe that I am Thai. And despite how I look to you, I mean, everybody's entitled to your own opinions. But for me, I believe that I'm Thai and I'm really proud to be Thai. See that. With her styling and how articulate and well-spoken this woman is, that is a Miss Universe should be. So I'm also rooting for her to win Miss Universe. So that's why she's my front runner. And last but definitely not the least, say hola to Colombia. Carolina Vega, Colombia. Ariadna Gutierrez, 21, Colombia. Andrea Tobar, Colombia. Laura So given that sash factor and consistent placement in the semifinals, this country has the most number of almost Miss Universe. Uh, there's, I have to apologize. With the first runner-up placement of Ariana Gutierrez in 2015, 
and Laura Gonzalez in 2017 and also a second, ra second runner up placement of Andrea Tovar who competed here in the Philippines in 2016. But let's not also for forget about um, Taliana Vargas when she competed in Miss Universe in 2008 and landing in first runner up. Of course, the winner at that time is um, Diana Mendoza from Venezuela. But let's not forget about the three-peat happened in the 90s where Colombia actually placed um, first runner-up in 1992, 1993, and 1994 when actually Sushmita Zen won Miss Universe here in the Philippines. Well, for me, Gabriela Tafur reminded me of Paulina Vega. You know, a body to die for, that beautiful face. And she even worked as a model and a lawyer in the legal department of Microsoft in Colombia. Interesting fact, right? She is really an empowered woman for me. And that kind of personality is what a Miss Universe should have. So I have Philippines, Thailand, and Colombia. So some of you might actually uh, ask me or thinking why I did not include Venezuela, uh, you know, in my front runners. It is because I am not seeing Venezuela as a possible semi-finalist uh, in this year's edition of Miss Universe. I actually missed the time uh, seeing a gorgeous um, Latina competing in Miss Universe from Venezuela, like Irene Iser, you know, the I'm a surfer girl. For example, I am a surfer and, and Gabriela Isler. You know, this type of um, candidates uh, I would like to see in this, you know, upcoming Miss Universe pageant. Well, um, the new director, national director of uh, Miss Venezuela is now Gabriela Isler, replacing uh, Osmel Sousa. So I bet or I actually, you know, have this gut feeling that as a former Miss Universe, for sure, you know, she knows how to strategize to win the title of Miss Universe. So let's see. And congratulations to their newly crowned uh, Miss Venezuela, Talia Olivino, who will actually compete in Miss Universe 2020 next year. So that will be all for today's episode of my vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed this quick pageant review about my front runners in this year's edition of Miss Universe 2019. Comment down below what do you think about my front runners and let's get connected. So before I end this video, I want to say thank you so much again to my 1000 YouTube subscribers and to all the pageant fans out there who keeps on watching my video. Please continue on supporting me in my uh, journey here in YouTube. Goodbye now. Take care always. Love you all.